Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Here, are Here are your announcements. Walk with Christ, Walk with and, Christ be and be baptized. Sign up on a connection, up on a connection card or at thewayberkeley.com slash connect. Be prepared to attend the baptism class, which happens on the day you're baptized. We commit to helping you grow as a Christian. Sign up for the available live groups at thewayberkeley.com slash grow. Groups include UC Berkeley small groups too. Check the website for the schedule. Are you a UC Berkeley student in need of a ride to Sunday service? Well, starting October 1st, meet at Unit 1 Christian Hall on Sundays at 9.30 for a ride to church. Drop-offs will be at the same location. Get a free session with a licensed clinician by signing up at thewayberkeley.com. Join us here at The Way for Lament, a series of pauses. The performance and four-week teaching series is grounded in the context of friendship, oriented toward faith in God, and explores hard-to-voice questions about racial injustice. The program runs on Wednesday evenings now through October 4th. Join your friends who have expanded their service to our community. You can serve for a term on one of our ministry teams. Sign up at thewayberkeley.com slash grow in order to serve. You can access these updates and more at thewayberkeley.com. Enjoy your week. All right. All right, clap it up for that. So that's our prayer on today. We have Bibles that are going around. If you need a Bible, go ahead. All my scholarly people who are refusing to use technology, sticking with the old school, you're going to have a, I, I see you, we got you. I also need to acknowledge all my ones from Charged Up. Hi, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, this is actually, hey, boo, this is actually our Charged Up Sunday. So all our babies are here. We had lots of fun and excitement planned for today. But now we're going to have it in here. Yeah. <laughs> fun times. So, yes, I love our kids. They're doing great. Um, so, love you guys. Thanks for hanging in there with us. So excited to see you guys grow in the Lord. All right, let's open in prayer, and then we'll get right to it. So, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this time. Thank you for bringing us together, God. We feel your spirit. We thank you for such a great sense of community, for all the different people you brought into this place. And we're here for you, God. We say we are here for you. We are here to love on you, to worship you, to learn more about you. So, Lord, um, as we go into your word, I pray that you would open our eyes. Open our eyes. Let us see you. God, speak to our hearts and to our minds. Speak to our hearts. Let the word fall on good ground on today and let it reap a harvest in our lives. Have your way on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right. Well, the title of this, this message is called, Oh No, You Didn't. Oh No, You Didn't. Have you ever had an Oh No, You Didn't moment? Do you have those daily? If you're like me, you need constant deliverance. Oh No, You Didn't moment. You know, th those are times when, you know, when someone... FaceTimes you without a heads up. You ever had one of those? It's just a ringing. You ain't looking right. You got, you got a roll bone. You don't even have your face is not, no, crust is still in your eye. And someone has the nerve to FaceTime? What are you FaceTiming me? Oh, no, you didn't, right? Or, you know, when people still try to cut you off in line as an adult. Are we still doing these things? <laughs> You're an adult. I, you know, when it's kids, like, oh, it's the kids. They're learning. When someone cuts you off in line or you're in the grocery store and they just ease on in like you don't, it's like, oh, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Everyone who drive, come on, join me in the struggle. They just go, you just going to cut me off, huh? Oh, no, you didn't. For real, that's how we doing? And then the, the one that gets me the most, I don't know about you guys. You know, and, you know as you're getting older and you're maturing, have you had someone hang up on you in the middle of a conversation? It's like, oh, oh, no, you did. <laughs> yeah, that, the, this better be cell phone reception has gone awry, right? Oh, no, you didn't moment. 
Well, we were, what we're going to talk about today is a classic, oh, no, you didn't moment in the Bible. You didn't even know those existed, did you? It's all in the Bible. Y'all should read it more often. A classic, oh, no, you didn't moment that we're going to read about today. So if you could open your, your Bibles and your electronic Bibles and turn on your apps and uh, go to Mark 1 and 40. By the way, we didn't welcome all of our Facebook viewers who are at Bedside Baptist. What's up? How y'all doing? Good to have you. Go ahead. While you're opening your Bibles to your Bible app, why don't you go ahead and invite a friend to join in and watch our services? Because they should have been up with you. You got up, right? They should have got up too. So send it to them. All right. We're reading um, Mark 1, 40, starting there. And um, if you're some of my Young Life people, you heard a little bit of this. Bear with me. Yes. So let's start reading. Verse 40. A man with leprosy came. We're going to stop right there. A man with leprosy. A man with leprosy came. That's a curious statement, just off the gate. This, is, this story always starts off all wrong, that a man with leprosy came to Jesus. See, if you had leprosy in Bible days, it wasn't like, you, you know, you just go to Kaiser or you go to some and get that cleared up right quick, go to a little local clinic. No, leprosy was a pretty deadly disease. Um, so if you had leprosy back in Bible times, it was highly contagious. It was a, a progressive skin disease, right? It deformed the limbs. It decayed your hands and your face. And it had these blisters that would bust out all over, and it would scab and crust over. So I was going to show y'all pictures, but I figured that would have been doing too much. So they, I, they, yeah, I see I'm thinking about y'all. I had a whole slideshow. But I spared you. You can look it up on your own. This thing is gnarly. You know, sometimes we look at the cute little Bible picture books, and we see, like, the cute people, like, Jesus, I need help. Like, we look, and we think it was all, like, cute. But this was a gnarly-looking disease. This man was looking like, you know, when you go to the spirit store, the Halloween store, you got all the crazy-looking mask and people looking all askewed. This was a terrible looking disease that this man had. We don't know how long he had it. When you had this disease, it totally ostracized you from society. Because according to Jewish law, you had to do a few things. First of all, you could not be in the community at all because it was contagious. So, you know, if you had a house, well, now you need to live in the leper colony, which is usually outside the city, what was outside the city was also the city dump, where, you know, they didn't have what, waste management back then, the WM, with the trucks rolling around. So people just, whatever they discarded, it was just outside the city. So it was filthy, it was dirty. This person was totally isolated from society. And guess what? Whenever he went anywhere, he had to yell a certain thing. So whenever he approached the city say, hey, just walking down the street one day, he just has to always yell, unclean, unclean. Everywhere he goes, he comes to approach you, hey, un unclean, just letting you know, unclean, me, I'm unclean. And that might work maybe, you know, first week or two, but then that's going to get old after a while. Like, hey, unclean, yeah, me. The rule was you had to stay six feet away from someone who had, lepr who had leprosy. So what that, Brother Mari is about, about right here? So at all times, you're six feet away from everyone at all times. They had a strange rule also, if the wind was blowing, you had to stay 150 feet away. I don't know if they just walked around with measuring tapes. <laughs> But can you imagine if the wind blowing just how people would treat? You know how people are. Hey, bruh, it's blowing. No, wind blowing. Get on back. Mm-mm, too close. Mm-mm. <laughs> back it on up, bruh. Right? They had to wear rags 
in torn clothes at all time, and also had to have like a makeshift um, rag that covered their mouth and their nose. Can you imagine what life was like for this man? Sit and think about it. Sometimes we just read and we're just like, okay, and a man approached Jesus and we just read the story. But let's sit and really think about this leper. What was life like for him? You know, maybe he had a wife. Maybe he had kids. Maybe he was a prominent person in his community. He might have had a house. Now, all of a sudden, you have this disease and you're separated and isolated from everything you know and love. No one can touch you, you can't touch them, you are considered unclean. People are appalled when they saw you. Whenever you came in the vicinity, it's like, oh no. You know, and reasonably so, you know, medicine wasn't where, you know, where we are today. No one wanted this. I don't want leprosy, oh no. Then I gotta live like you, I got a life. Think about this man. What was his life? What if he had a little boo? What if he had a girlfriend? You was in love, and now she, I can't talk to you no more, but you, do you still love me? Like, I'm, are we good? No? Think about him. This man had leprosy. So let's pick up the story. It said, a man with leprosy came and kneeled in front of Jesus. So, wait, this is where we got to hold up right here. This is our, oh, no, you didn't moment. Because, excuse me, sir, do you know the rules? We just went over the rules, correct? The rules were you need to be <laughs> six feet. I don't know if the wind was blowing or not. What? Oh, no, you didn't. This is very controversial for this man to approach Jesus. And what did he do? He knelt in front of him. That's, that's close proximity. He knelt in front of him. Now, let's, let's compare. Let's compare. Let's, let's compare Jesus' reaction to what my reaction would have been. Uh, there's going to be a stark difference, Right? So, you know, leper approached me, I'm Jesus, and he gets to my feet. I'm like, um, disciples, what? Security is 12 of y'all. None of, how, how do you get through? Are you serious? What are y'all good for? Y'all just going to let him in. Fine, you know. And then, you know, what if, you know, I'm like, okay, how you doing? What you need? Okay. Hey, Peter, where them gloves? You got them? Plastic gloves, like really would have been, or, or just irritated, like, you know, you know the rules. You're totally breaking everything that we, this was, this was a desperate move. Have you ever been desperate? Have you ever been desperate to the point where I don't care? <laughs> I, I got desperate times called for desperate measures, and I'm about to make some moves. Look at this man's mindset. He literally broke every word. What made him break this rule when he saw Jesus approaching? He literally broke everything that was in culture and came and kneeled before Jesus' feet in his bubble, in his proximity. This is a, oh, no, you didn't. I know people's like, oh, gasp, pearls. Touches. He was, look at, look at what he said. First he came, he knelt in front of Jesus, begging to be healed. Can you imagine the, the desperation in his voice? Like, Jesus, oh my gosh, Jesus, Jesus, I heard you were in town. If you are willing, can you, can you heal me? And make me clean? L listen to the insecurity of his ask. Look how insecure. He, he wasn't even sure. He was so unsure, like, I don't know. I'm taking a big risk. I'm throwing it all out there. I'm putting all my crabs in. I'm doing a hole. Putting every, I don't know if you could do this. They might stone me after this. 
I don't got nothing else to lose. Jesus, I'm just wondering if you can, if you can, are you, are you willing? If you're willing, could you please? Now, just the, for, the fact that he said, if you're willing, makes you know that, that he knew that you, this guy can. I seen you did it. I heard you that you did the little people with the blind eyes. I heard the little man started walking and the little lady with the, I heard you did all these great things. See, a lot of times we hear Jesus doing all the, they got a promotion. He got a job. He got a new car. They got a house. He got into college. Wondering, Lord, what about, what about me? Do you think you can do it for me, Jesus? Anybody ever had a question like that before? God, I've seen you did it. I've seen you do it before. Other, you think you, could, you can do this for me? Jesus' reaction was definitely not my reaction. Verse 41 says, move with compassion. Let's just stop it. Just move. That, that word in the Greek is like his bowels, everything in him just churned on the inside. That's how much compassion he had. Not irritation, not, oh, my gosh, are you serious? Like, who let this guy in? Like, what's going on? Not irritation. But this really gives us a great insight of how God sees us. This is how God sees us. Even in our darkest times, in our most messed up times, in our ugliest moments, in our most sinful state, in the worst party weekend that you just came off of, of the worst affair or anything you had, he still sees you and is moved with compassion, which is much different than the God that we have in our mind. We think he is mad. We think he is angry. We think he going to get back at me. I better watch my back because God about to get me. We think he got a lightning bolt. I, most of y'all, be, me might have said, I can't even go into church because if I go into church, psh, it might burn. <laughs> it might burn. I don't even want to do them people in there like that. All because of me. But this is where we have to change our perspective on how we see Jesus. He's not mad at you. He's not irritated with you. He's not holding this, whatever the ugliest thing you've done. He looks at you and is moved with compassion. What great news. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Now, I think you guys were with me when we talked about the, um, when Jesus healed the man's little eyes and he spit in it. I was like, Jesus, you didn't need to do all that with the spit and stuff. So this is another one of these things. He reached out and he touched him. Y'all got to get this. He touched this man. This man had probably not been touched in years. A human touch in years. He has not had anyone just a human touch. He's not had that in so long. Jesus touched. He did the unthinkable. No one touches a leper. No, man, you're going to get it. He got the cooties. Go. He didn't care. He reached and he touched him. Touching him was so unnecessary because he could have just spoke a word. He could have just spoken. Hey, hey, bruh, you healed. All right, keep it moving. See, you good. Check it out. Mm-hmm. He could have just kept it moving. He said, oh, yeah, your daughter, don't worry about it. She healed. But he took the time to touch him. And check it, check out, check out when he touched him, though. See, I would have been like, you healed, you good? All right, now I'm going to shake hands. No, he touched him before he was healed. So what does this tell you about your Jesus? What does this tell you about Jesus? He touched him before he even healed him in his dirtiest state, in the most deplorable condition. Remember, we don't know what this guy looked like. He could have been all jacked up. And he touched him. And he said, 
I'm willing. I'm willing. Be healed. He said, I am healed. And why? Why would he touch the one thing everyone shunned? Why would Jesus do that? Why would he touch the one thing that everybody ran from? There's no way. Because he is bigger. He is bigger. You guys got it? If you don't take anything away from that, he is bigger than anything, any disease, any hurricane, any earthquake. He's bigger than any problem, any mistake you've made. He's bigger. You, that didn't even phase him. You're like, what? Leprosy, Psh, lightweight. Here you go, bro. Right? Jesus is working on the same wavelength that we're working on. He's much bigger than your problems. Think about the greatest problem you're dealing with right now. And then let's do the equation. He is greater than. What's the sign? Where's Malaysia when I need a math teacher? <laughs> He's greater than anything. He's great. His, his equation always equals I'm bigger than that. Anything you worried about right now, I'm bigger than that. Any disease that you might have in your body, I'm still bigger than that. I can touch whatever. It, don't, it doesn't phase me. And he healed him. He healed him. Imagine the joy. Come on, think about this leper. His skin is jacked up, scabs everywhere, deformed hand. Jesus said, oh, you're healed. You good? He looks down. Can you imagine what he saw when he looked down and is completely healed? Do you know what that meant for him? I can go home. I can go back to my wife, my family. My, I'm back. I'm, I'm back. My life is back to normal. I'm whole. Jesus cleansed the leper. Not just healed him. He cleansed him. Imagine the joy. So these are the lessons that I've learned from the leper. And we're almost done. Ha. Give the Lord a praise for early service. Ah. See you. <laughs> See, you go get <laughs> Y'all go get me fired. Stop. No, just kidding. Lessons from a leper. First thing I've learned. That no matter what situation you're going through, no matter how big and impossible it seems, all you have to do is come to Jesus in the language of worship. Come on, let's look at what he did. Come to Jesus. A lot of times we hold, you know, we strong. I got this. No, I'm good. I'm holding it in. I'm going to be strong for everybody. Holding it. You good? No, I'm good. I'm good. You want to talk? You want to share? You going to go coffee? No, no. Mm -mm, fine. Holding it all in. He learned the secret. He came to Jesus. Number one, you got to come to him. You got to come to him. Not come to Instagram or Facebook and tell everybody your problems. Not come to your family, your friends, your best friend, your, your partner, you're, you know, we come, we, we ask advice, we on advice columns, you typing it in, what should I do for, we on dating sites. He came to Jesus and he knelt in front of him. He came bowing down and kneeling. That is the language of worship. Whenever we approach God with worship, God responds to worship. Y'all know that God responds to worship. Worship is God's love language. You ever want to get to God, you ever want to get to his art, just begin to worship him. God, you're amazing. I know you're able. I know you can handle this problem. Only you can. That's what he came. If you're willing, you're the only one who can do it. Some of your problems you need God, you're the only one who can do it. Anybody been there? Ain't nobody got no other options for you. We can't lend you no more money. We can't help you. You got to get out in three days. Like, you are the only one who can help me. So he came bowing down and kneeling. That is a position of humility. A lot of times we still up straight like, yeah, Jesus, I, uh, yeah, I need something from you. 
still all swole and stuff, like, yeah, Jesus. No, no, no. We got to get low. Get all the way down. He came all the way down and worshipped him and kneeled before him. See, a lot of we need to kneel. We just talked about God having reign over our life. Have you knelt down to your king? Anybody watch Game of Thrones? I'm sorry, this is way off topic. Game of Thrones, thank you, sis. You know, when she was like... I had a good analogy. Plug your ears. Well, there was a situation where someone was requiring someone else to kneel before them and, can, you know what I'm talking about, and kiss the ring. You know, like, I'm your, your king or your queen. Could have been either. <laughs> but they, she wanted, he wanted, they wanted. They wanted the person to kneel down and acknowledge their, their rulership. You need to, I need you to bow down and admit that I am your king or your king or your queen. Have you bowed your life to God? Have you let, like, God, you know what? I give it all to you. It's all yours. Just, there's nothing else. You are Lord. You are king. I give it all to you. See, that's humility. That's not saying, I got this, Jesus, and I'll call you when I need help. He's not Santa. He's not your, you know, gift list, your magic genie. He wants to be the Lord of your life. So first thing I learned from the leper, come to Jesus with the language of worship. Second thing I learned from the leper, know that Jesus is willing. We need to sit with that for a minute. We so used to having the mean God in our mind, like that he going to say no to everything. Maybe, how many mamas are like that? I was like that. <laughs> Mama, can I? No. Hey, put your hand down. <laughs> it's my son. <laughs> hey. It was true. They go to the store, go to the store. Don't go to the store asking for stuff. <laughs> can we? No. Can we? No. Can, what about this? No. Well, sometimes this is not what the Lord is doing in your life. Sometimes the Lord is not the one who's always saying no. And a lot of times we don't come to him with our biggest dreams and our biggest possibilities. When's the last time you came with him with your biggest dream? Like, it don't even make sense. Like, you can't even really explain it to a friend. Like, if you told them, they'd be like, oh, that's what you're going to do, huh? Sounds great. But give those. He is willing. What about your biggest mess? The thing you still sit up nights thinking about, still beating yourself up about, still kicking yourself, still feeling guilty about. Are you willing to give that to him? Because he's like, I'm, I'm willing. Jesus, can you, can you fix this? I'm willing. Can you cleanse this, Lord? Yeah, sure. I'm willing. Can you heal this? Can I give it to you? Jesus wants you to know that he is willing. When was the last audacious prayer that you prayed? I mean, out the box. I mean, something that only God can do. See, a lot of times we don't. We're like, oh, that's too much for Jesus. He's busy. He's got a lot, a lot of people. This message is for you. Give him your wildest dream. This man took the biggest risk of all. He took the biggest risk. He got down on his knees. He broke all the rules. He gave him, gave him the biggest request he could have asked, and it was nearly impossible. Don't lose that dream. Give it to him. Don't say, he. Ah, that's too much. Come on. I'm learning from this leper. Another thing I learned from the leper is that Jesus wants to touch my worst condition. He wants to touch it. Now, it's been said that the condition of leprosy can also be compared to sin. 
the condition of having leprosy, um, the way it separates people from communities, the way it isolates, the way it progressively spreads. You ever, you know, started off with a little sin, and then a little, little more, then a little, you know, then you headlong, you all swimming in the sin, and you're like, I just put my toe in, right? <laughs> sin is progressive. It's like a cancer. It spreads. It starts one little area of your life, and if you, if you've experienced it, it will be all-encompassing. It could be com- compared, leprosy can be compared to sin. It makes us unclean. Sin is the only thing that separates us from fellowship with God. And let's get, let's get straight of what sin is. A lot of times when we say sin, it's just like, oh, that's just being bad. Stop being bad, right? But sin is, is really the, the correct term is that it's missing the mark. It's missing the mark or the standard that God has for us. I have friends who were in the brownies, cup salads, brownies, yes. And they did archery class. Anybody did archery? Anybody else did? Oh, look at y'all. Y'all better crap fire. No one put me in that. So archery, the whole analogy to that is like you're trying to hit a target, but when you're trying to hit a, a standard or a target, you fall short. That's exactly what sin is. God has a standard and we constantly don't live up to it, or we miss the mark. And sin is a very serious condition. It was so serious that Jesus, had, God had to send Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. It's very serious, because if left untreated, sin left untreated causes death. Just like cancer left untreated, sin left untreated causes death, whether it's emotionally physically, mentally, spiritually. But the good news is that there's a cure. God has provided a cure. He has provided a way. We could not pay for our own sins. Did everybody get that? You know, like we can, you know what the payment for your own sin was? You know, everybody was supposed to pay for their own sins. It's like if, I, if I went to jail, I got to go to jail for my own time. Everyone pays for their own sin. You know what the payment is? It's death. Everyone was supposed to climb up on that cross and die for your own sin. You, 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 did, you did it. You, you got to pay for it. It don't just disappear, right? And look how gracious Jesus was to come see our condition. They can't pay. They don't even got no money. They don't. There is no way. To, and he took our place died on the cross for our sins. The good news is that your sins have been forgiven. This is what we're supposed to tell the whole world. Hey, guess what? God's not holding your sins against you no more. You know, hey, good news. Hey, we need to have like a bail. Hey, guess what? God's not holding your sins against you anymore. They're not separating you. So what's still separating you from God? If he's removed every obstacle and every barrier, why are we still so far from God. So this sin issue, God, he has already fixed it. Just like the leper, Jesus was sent to take care of every ugly issue in our life. Every place in our lives that are ugly and yucky and you don't want nobody to see the ugly side that we don't put on when we walk into this into this room, we're like, hey, praise the Lord. Yep, everyone, everything's good. Praise him. When you get at home, it could be a whole different story. Everyone has an ugly, y'all going to leave me up here? Everybody got an ugly side? Yes. My, y'all drive with me, you might see. <laughs> my alter ego. But uh, God, he died. Jesus, God sent Jesus to die for every ugly part of our lives. Now, he wants you to have the same experience that that leper felt when he was whole. Can you imagine that? He wants you to experience that same level of wholeness. He looked and was like, oh my gosh, I am brand new. I got a fresh start. I'm, 
I'm back. I could be with my family. Can you imagine you feeling that on the inside? Every ugly, dirty place, everything that you don't like about yourself. Can you imagine him touching and healing and cleansing that and you having that feeling of, I'm new. I'm washed, I'm clean, that stuff doesn't even hold me no more, I'm a new person. So he wants to turn your, oh no you didn't, into, oh yes I did. Oh yes I did, oh yes I got free. Oh, yes, I got free from that. Oh, yes, I'm walking a new life. Oh, yeah, all the, yeah, that used to be me. That's not me no more. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, yes, he did free me. Oh, yes, I am a new person. And yes, I am. Yes, God did. Yes, God did. That same, these, these verses that we see, this is not just some ancient book. This is for you. It's for us. It's not something that was written and then, you know, oh, that was for them. This story can come alive in your life. He wants to cleanse us. He wants to free us. He wants to show you how compassionate he is. Some people he just needs to, he needs to do a PR check. He needs to do a, a, change the way you see him and the way you view him. That he is loving and he's compassionate and he's willing He's willing. He's a loving God. He loves you so much. So we are going to close on that. I'm going to ask everyone to stand. We got lessons from a leper. We want to take this time just to reflect. We got a few questions. I want you guys just to think about and reflect. We're going to go into just a time of worship and singing. Yeah, our questions. Like the leper, have you ever felt shunned or isolated? Have you felt left out, pushed out? When you came around, nobody wanted to be around you or moved the other way. Maybe it was your skin color. Maybe it was your... In your status in life. Maybe it was your past. My question is, how did Jesus meet you in that moment? Or if you're currently feeling isolated or shunned, this is your invitation for Jesus to meet you right in that moment. Next question is, what is significant about Jesus' touch? I want to invite everyone here. If you've never felt the touch of God in your life, in your heart, or in your soul, this is your chance, your time, your opportunity. He wants to touch the deepest parts of your life that no one else knows about, understands, can relate to, you think that nobody understands you, but Jesus is like, I'm just waiting on you to let me in to that area. Why every, everyone just bow your heads right now so we could just have a, a time of personal reflection. Come on, this is your opportunity to talk to God for yourself. God, I need to feel a touch from you. I need a touch from you that's different than the people around me. I need to feel you. I need you to do for me like you did that leper. The hurtful parts, the shameful parts, the sinful parts. God, can you touch it? Can you touch that part in my life? If you've ever felt isolated or shunned, this is your opportunity to say, God, help me. I'm feeling lonely. I want to be reconnected. Another question is, who are the lepers in your life? Who are the people in your life that you are hands off? There is no way. They better not talk to me. They better not touch me. They better not come in my space. Perhaps Jesus wants 
to use you to touch them for him. Maybe it's you with that same touch that Jesus had. God wants to use you to touch other people. Can you surrender that to him today? The people who you've considered hands off, maybe someone who's hard to forgive, someone who has an offense against you, somebody who's not a part of your, your, your nationality, your race, your culture. Can you give that to him? Someone you don't agree with politically. Can you say, God, will you use me to touch those people? I surrender that to you. I surrender that to you, God.